good day, morning, uh, evening. This is probably an evening. Um, I'm incredibly behind in my SWIDs, so we're just gonna fucking power through this. The SWIDs of October and November 2016. We're gonna fucking power through, get them up, get December up. They're gonna be quality, powered through but quality, and then we'll be on to the new year and planning some exciting things, more videos. We'll see how it goes. Let's do this. Nice. Okay, cool. In October, I was still working at the documentary production company in Glasgow. So, when my family went on holiday to the Black Isle, I was unable to join them the whole time. But I did manage to go for a couple weekends. Let go of your mind Let go And she won't return. And then my placement at the documentary production company finished, and I headed home to shoot some corporate. I also did some more videos for the BBC, as well as editing on some I'd been shooting whilst living in Glasgow, and worked on some more for a little series they run called Into It, which is a little mini documentary series profiling different interesting Scottish young people. Um, if you are a Scottish young person and you or someone you know is passionate about something interesting, drop me a message, maybe maybe I can feature you, who knows? Um, and then there was a small lull before I was launched in to the busiest month of my entire life, November. Now, November began with something I hold very closely to my heart and that is budgeting. Mmm, budgeting. I had recently gotten some funding through a film program to make my own short documentary. That process began with a lot of planning and um, redrafting of things like treatments. A treatment is a sort of a script for a documentary. It's basically laying out your ideas, the style you're looking for, the people you'll be working with, what it'll all involve in your sort of your vision, your motivation, stuff like that. These last two or three days has involved basically finalizing budget schedules, equipment lists for shooting the documentary which is gonna happen this weekend. So currently I have been working on that in the upstairs of my parents food shop because I know that if I am at home I will not work, I will watch Netflix. It has encouraged my snacking habits a lot, being surrounded by food and Christmas stock but I have been getting a lot of work done. I've become a grown-up I would say through budgeting, scheduling, as well as invoices for uh, other work. The film is about a charity group which makes adapted bears to look like kids with specific illnesses, so say they have a tube in their stomach or something, this bear is sort of there to comfort them, make them feel less alone and different and stuff, and the film is going to follow the sort of journey of a bear from um, a factory in the south of England in Canterbury, where they're made, to a village in the north of Scotland where they are adapted, and then back south again where they are gonna go off to some kids and make a difference. The excitement is unlikely to hit until this is properly finalized and I am on my first day of shooting. Then I will be excited. For now, stress. Lots of stress. So I headed to Glasgow, uh, met up with a guy called Kevin who would be my production assistant and started shooting um, the, the first few days. Then we headed up north to do some shooting in the north um, I also took some time to show Kevin my drone, which he was very excited about. Then it was time to head to uh, London and then onwards to Canterbury. Hey, so I am currently on the sleeper train to London um, with Kevin, whose suit you can see right there. 
um, and it is for the final day of our documentary shoot and we're going to be shooting in a place called Beaksburn which is near Canterbury. We have been upgraded to beds on the sleeper train which is exciting because we could not budget for beds so we booked chairs. So here is a good place, uh, free beds, free water, USB chargers, it's a good place. I was actually not that well uh, by the end of it so instead of exploring London with Kevin who had never been to London before, um, I sat on the floor in a very busy train station. Following that I spent about two or three days at home and my friend C came to visit and stayed for a couple days. That evening we went to a Cayley. Um, a Cayley is a sort of Scottish dance event thing. So C had never been to one before and I thought it was time to introduce this English pal of mine to some pure Scottish joy. Then it was time for me to head back to England, this time to Coventry, for the start of joining a play on their tour. Hey, so today I am in Coventry, um, which is a place I've never been to before, um, and that is because I have a job filming a play tour and I will be following it for dates in Coventry, Oxford and Harrow and I'm uh, making some progress editing my new short documentary So C left yesterday Bye! Which was sad but it was cool to have them come stay This is fun, getting to travel places I haven't been before and do filming which is always a good time We're excited to explore um, like Coventry and Oxford as well because I've not been to either of them before. If I have time to do any exploring, I mean to just edit and hermit in hotel rooms. This is emotional for me because I have been reading and buying 1080 for at least a good two years now and I love the filmmakers that they feature and I have no idea how I am on the same the same website as them, the same article as them. Let me find this. Oh man. Okay, time to work. Hey! So today I am in Oxford, um, staying at the place called the Pickwick's Guest House, I think, um, and it's really pretty. I have a, I have a fucking balcony, um, which is exciting. Um, so it's 10 to 3 now, um, I'm going to head over to the venue a little earlier today and get some shots of them setting up and stuff. I made some progress with the documentary this morning, I'm on to the more kind of key parts and I'm feeling alright about them, I think. There's a slight issue with audio in one of the interviews, that the mic just like glitched and made these weird beeping sounds, but I did have backup audio on um, just like my shotgun mic. So it should be okay. And yeah, I'm liking chilling here. I don't think I'm gonna pan 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 which was very 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 uh, a very in-depth few days, very tiring few days, very interesting few days and very productive too. My birthday also occurred uh, whilst I was at drum training. It was, a, it was a weird birthday, getting old is weird. Then it was time to head back to London and this time for a few days DIT training at Pinewood Studios. <laughs> Yeah. Well, 
So I am currently traveling back from London for the third time in three weeks. I've spent the last couple days at Pinewood Studios, which has been a fun time. A DIT is a role sort of somewhere in between the camera crew and editing. It stands for digital imaging technician and it's basically it's quite a variable role. It's one of it's one of the only roles that really doesn't have like laid out job roles and um, it kind of varies on the film but um, it involves copying over all the footage, backing up, possibly some colour grading, talking to the DOP and director about issues, putting together the dailies. It's a pretty cool job and I'm quite interested in it so I thought I would learn a little more about it. So here I am, or there I was, um, and hanging at Pinewood obviously was a bonus and um, it was based in the Red Europe building which was also definitely a bonus. Overall, interesting and useful. Met some cool new people, um, as is always the case with film stuff. Um, one of the guys um, I added on Facebook after, turns out we have like seven friends in common. All other um, filming people, actually YouTube filming people. And then on Sunday, I am flying out to Stavanger, which is the south of Norway, to visit my friend Bonnie and make a new film. Um, so we're gonna do a little more planning on Friday evening, I think finish off uh, polishing the script and then we're gonna hold auditions on Monday and really just start shooting straight after that pretty much because I'm just there for like eight days. Uh, night kids. And then I headed back to Scotland once more, spent a couple days at home and then flew to bloody Norway uh, to visit my friend David Bonetti in Stavanger where he is currently living and make a short film. The film, Stum, is what we decided to call it, which means tongue-tied in Norwegian. Um, and it is an LGBTQ drama um, slash romance. And I am incredibly excited about it because with film, I've always wanted to try and use filmmaking to make the world of film a bit more diverse and have more representation. And I think this is my first step in the, in the right direction. And it's very exciting. Um, and I'm really excited for you guys to see that. That's where the month ends, um, because I didn't get back from Stavanger till uh, till December. So, as you can see, it was a very, very, very busy month. Um, I was back and forth to London three times, as well as flying to Norway. Um, I did not have many rests at all in that month, so I've been catching up a bit over Christmas, which has been very, very pleasant. Um, although I've had some paperwork to do for my documentary. Honestly, there, uh, there were good and bad points, as there always are. Um, to being that busy to that extent. Um, I expect that's what life is like as a freelance filmmaker really and I'm not going to complain about it but also I think I need to remember to take breaks sometimes too because it's not that healthy really. It's not that good for my mental health to take no breaks. Look forward to exciting stuff in 2017. I will be making lots more films as well as releasing the ones I've been going on about in 2016. Um, I'm thinking of branching into some some different areas, maybe doing some so talking about different roles in the film industry or profiling some different people in the film industry and different jobs and explaining them if you're interested in learning more about that kind of thing. Um, and I can share some of my experience or give uh, give people advice um, about if they want to get into film. Let me know what you're interested in um, and I will be happy to oblige. Cool, it's been good to talk to you. Let me know what's going on in your life because I am genuinely interested. Uh, let me know what you thought of this um, and have a good bloody 2017.